ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls. That was a lot of a long, that was a lot longer of a walk than we're used to, isn't it? Usually I pop right up on the screen, but not today. Because today, I have to apologize for the surroundings, for the set and setting. I am, we are in the middle of a move here at the Pod Tiki household, and we're still getting set up, and I don't really have a spot to do these yet. But I skipped the last one for the missionary's downfall, and I didn't want to skip this one. So you know what? Because this one is very special. This one is one of my favorite new cocktails, that, but it's not new, but I don't know how I missed it all these years. You know, my foray into classic American cocktails, which the, the American cocktail, I say that, is the American cocktail, but the cocktail actually is an American invention. And one of the things that... The, I, I feel like, oh look, here's Mitty coming. You know what better time than Halloween to have a little Halloween cat come in, come into the uh, into the into the video, but uh, classic cocktails like Prohibition era American cocktails are looked at as being maybe you might look back in the day. You might look at like you know the antithesis or the or, or the, um, uh, the the antediluvian times. You know where where before we you know, rudimentary, if, if you will, because we don't have all the stuff we have now. But, quite the contrary, these old classic cocktails, much like classical music, actually laid the groundwork and were copied quite a bit and were, in, were incredible in their own time. Like, these drinks mixed flavors that were, uh, not only were the ingredients kind of better back then, but they also were, these people were geniuses, and these are the people, the, the Jerry Thomas, the Harry Crotta, who created this drink, these are the people that led to Don the Beachcomber and Trader Vic and people like that. So today, with a little bit of a Halloween theme, we're going to make the Corpse Reviver. And I tell you, this definitely works. It will. It's part of that cocktail group known as the Eye Openers or the Hair of the Dog, the morning after drinks. But this one happens to taste a lot like the night before because it's delicious and you can drink it any time of day. And it's one of my favorites. We talk all about the history of it, all about Harry Crotta and the Savoy book and a little bit of a deep dive into absinthe and some of the ingredients involved. So please go check out the episode of Pod Tiki all about the Corpse Reviver, which is available now, wherever you stream your podcasts, all, like all the top ones, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, um, iHeartRadio, and of course, always at podtiki.com where you can find the whole archive of every single episode that we did. So let's jump into it. We're going to start off today with some London Dry Gin. Right, London Dry is the, is the style you want to go with here. I use Beefeater. If I'm doing a uh, martini, I usually go Sapphire, but I find that the Beefeater um, has a little bit more botanical that comes to the forefront, and you need that to cut through some of the other heavier ingredients here. So one of my favorites, and I think I love about gin, much like rum in our tiki drinks, is that you don't have to break the bank yet to get a good version of it. The regular standard drinks, especially if you do a little bit of a research into the golden age of cocktail drinks, they they don't spend money on these high-end top shelf alcohols to put in their mixed drinks like it's it's they use the standard run they don't go cheap but they don't go top shelf they they make their drinks with standard run-of-the-mill good alcohols now also back then these were all new and they were the top of top of the line but but the, the test of time it, it it's, a, it's a real thing guys it's a, don't don't underestimate your standard everyday alcohols just because they seem to be ubiquitous and, and maybe come up a little bit uh, cliche next thing we're gonna do is contro um, I, I guess any triple sec might um, might work I don't really know yet how I feel about triple sex and uh, uh, I've, I've, it's one of those things where I've looked into them so much and I st and I'm I have more questions than answers but um the Harry Crotta's recipe, who's the guy who invented the Corpse Reviver number two, which is the most popular recipe. Um, I guess I should have mentioned that the Corpse Reviver, as a style of drink, um, was that way until about the early 1900s, like the 1920s and 30s, when Harry Crotta wrote the Savoy Cocktail Book and actually put the recipe down and made it the official Corpse Reviver that we have today. And in his recipe, which we have, he specifically asks for Contro. So that's what we're going to use here. Uh, a, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go bottom shelf, but I also don't know if you need Contro. I'm going to use it here because I really want to make this drink the way that he wanted to make it. Next, we're going to use Lillet Blanc. Lillet, Lillet. I'm not sure. It's French, so I think it's Lillet. But this comes. This is a French white wine aperitif. It's uh, but it's not like a vermouth. This actually is more like a like a buttery Chardonnay. It's a. It's really. It's, it's, it's got that white wine crisp, but also with a, with a rich creaminess to it. 
I really enjoy it. I've actually had a couple of glasses of this by itself, like, you know, watching TV or on the back porch or something like that. The last thing we're going to need, or the last two things we're going to need, of course, is lemon juice. Lemon works really well with gin. If you're making a rum or a bourbon cocktail, lime juice seems to go good. Actually, lemon juice goes with bourbon or gin. But lime juice is usually what we focus on for tiki drinks. But with gin, lemon really brightens it up and goes really good. Uh, side note, you see how big this lemon is? Is this what lemons are supposed to look like? Or, or is this, you know, it reminds me of that, that song, Big Yellow Taxi, right? I don't care about spots up my apples, leave me the birds in the trees, right? I don't need you to make my, my lemons this big. But anyway, I appreciate it. It just won't fit in my juicer, you know? And who knows what kind of chemicals made that juice. Anyway, soapbox. Last thing we're gonna need is some absinthe. I used absinthe. Um, you can use whatever brand you want. I talk all about in the podcast that ooh, I go in a little bit of a rant about my views on absinthe versus Pernod and things like that. Um, the uh, I, I don't want to go too much into it here because I want you guys to listen to the episode. You can probably use a Pernod here. Probably not an Earth Saint, but a Pernod um, is is pretty close to an absinthe. Um, the only the the abs the active ingredient in the wormwood in the absinthe is so little of a part of the psychoactive ingredient that the only thing I notice is that a real high-end absinthe has a bit of a creamy pastis to it, but a lot of times you get that from an anise-flavored spirit, so I don't know if real absinthe, you know, I have, I have taken a few nights chasing the muse of the Green Fairy, and I don't know if it's in my head or if it's really just the absinthe. I, maybe there's something to it, I don't know, but I'm using real absinthe because that's what Harry Crowder called for, and I want the drink to be the way he wanted it to be. So, the last thing we're going to need is the only thing I forgot today. You know today, usually I forget the ice, but today I forgot a, a jigger. So, hold on one second while I grab my jigger. Jigger what? Jigger who? Before, I could edit this out and make it cuts and weird stuff and all that, but... You know, you get so many YouTube videos where people put so much production into it. You know, sometimes you want something just uh, on the kitchen counter with a tea plant behind you. You know, who, who cares? Um, I say that to make myself feel better, knowing that if I had the time and the money, I would put way more production into this. But suffice to say, we're going to... This is a shaken drink because it's got the lemon juice in it. When you ever have a citrus, you want to shake it to kind of break, break all those, um, those, em those enzymes and all that stuff, all the chemicals, all the... The, the atoms and the bits and pieces of the citrus. Citrus tends to clump together, so if you stir it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, uh, amalgamate into the drink as, as well. So we're going to start with one ounce of our gin. One ounce of gin. Pretty simple cocktail. Then we're going to go to one ounce of our Contro. 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 Contra. That's the French set. That's Contra in French. We're going to do one ounce of our Lillet Blanc. Don't forget that Lillet, as a wine product, once open, needs to be stored in the fridge, as all wine products do. Your aperitifs, your vermouths, all that stuff that's based on wine or your ports, anything that you only drink a little bit of at a time, needs to be stored in the fridge when you're done with it. We're going to do a half ounce of lemon juice. Too much lemon juice will make this into more of like a daiquiri style sour and overcomes, over, overbears the rest of the drinks, the rest of the ingredients rather, and uh, it just comes out all sour. This, putting a, dialing back to a half ounce of lemon juice actually brings the botanicals and the creaminess and the orange out and the pastis, which is the last ingredient we have here. We're going to do a couple of dash, if, if I was in a dasher bottle, I would say do two or three dashes, maybe about eight or 10 drops. Of, of this, but I'm gonna actually measure out about about a bar spoon, um, which is a little bit less than a teaspoon. The idea is you just want a little bit. Ideally, I would have a dasher bottle, but this is, this is how I keep my absinthe. So I'm gonna put in a, about a bar spoon or such of, of absinthe. You, as you saw, it wasn't that much. It's a little bit of absinthe. It just adds that, in fact, a lot of modern bartenders will actually just um, swill the glass, just coat the glass. Um, but Harry Craddock, who wrote the, literally wrote the book on the Corpse Reviver, says to add it in the drink, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, we're going to put 
our ice in here. Now we're gonna shake, shake, shake it, baby. Ooh, I forgot strainers too. Look at me, I'm all over the place today. It's been so long since I've done this, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I'm in a new place, in a new studio. I have nothing up, now my ice is melting in the glass. Oh, it's a shit show. All right, here we go. Oi, babe. All right, we're back. We're back. Look, I forgot two things today. Two things, man. You would think that I need the eye opener. I think I do, I think I need this. You can do the vibe, baby. All right. We're gonna use a coupe glass, or you can use a cocktail glass if you so rather prefer. We're gonna double strain that because you don't want any of the lemon pieces or the ice pieces coming in there. Whenever I make a cocktail cocktail, I always double strain it, as opposed to something on the rocks or a tiki drink. And then the garnish for this is super simple because who wants to make a who wants to do a crazy garnish when you're hungover, right? You're just going to grab one cherry. I'm using maraschino in this case. Um, doesn't matter if you want to use uh, if you want to use a, a dark cherry like a like a, um, a Manhattan or an old fashioned cherry. That's fine too. And we're gonna but we want to make sure they're stemless because you're gonna drop it right in the center of the glass. And you see, it kind of gives a nice layered effect to the color. It should be a pale, pallid color with a red on the bottom there. It kind of reminds you of a corpse, right? A very pale, um, light, off-white color, but then the, the blood of the heartbeat is still in the bottom. Your heartbeat's there, it's just gotta be revived. Mm. So good. I don't know why this drink has not become more popular in this modern resurgence of like a, a golden age cocktails because it's so perfect. It's like a daiquiri for a, it's a little bit toned down from the sourness of a daiquiri. It, it's a daiquiri for the cocktailing crowd, a daiquiri for the sporting crowd, if you will. It's, you can go order this in the morning as they say you're supposed to when you take your bitters or just have this the night before, have this at a cocktail bar. Next time you're at a bar, ask for a, a corpse reviver and it should be the number two variant. And this is what you're going to get, and it's going to be delicious. It is, it's got a bit of a buttery creaminess from the Lillet. Botanicals, the gin actually takes a back seat where like this, the citrus and the fruit from the, or the orange liqueur come out. Um, it's got just a hint of the anise from the, from the absinthe. In fact, we probably could have gotten a little bit more with that. Maybe, maybe instead of two or three dashes, maybe three or four dashes, because I like I like that anise flavor, but you don't want to overpower it. Again, such a balanced cocktail, the gin almost takes a back seat and just kind of like flows in, like, you know, kind of hugs the cocktail, the hugs the palate a little bit with the botanicals and the, and the, 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 the headiness of it. But these guys who were making these drinks back in the 20s and 30s, they were artists in their field. They really took the time to, to blend all of these nuanced flavors together. And when I drink these, you know, tiki drinks, they have a tendency to, to highlight a few flavors. They want to punch you in the face. They want to be bold. They want to be exotic. They want new and exciting things that tease the palate. Whereas classic uh, Prohibition era cocktails really are about blending together and being the, greater than the sum of their parts and creating a tertiary flavor that's different than any one ingredient that blends together perfectly balanced, perfectly smooth. And this is such a great, just sitting by, you, you can drink this uh, in a dark lit club with some candlelight and a jazz band playing. You can sip this on the back porch during the day. You can sip it by the beach. It's just such a wonderful cocktail. I don't understand why it hasn't made it into more more uh, cocktail menus, more programs. I think we're gonna see a resurgence of it as everything comes around. You know, these lighter cocktails, especially in the summertime. We, the Manhattan has had its day as a resurgence. The old fashioned has been, the old fashioned has had its day, come back, been effed out again, and then come back a little bit again with the new variants. But I think it's time to move on to the Corpse Reviver, especially this Halloween season. Mm. Such a wonderful drink. And that is that, folks. That is the Corpse Reviver. Thank you so much for watching and listening and dealing with all my running around, my craziness. I need to be revived. I think I'm good now. I should have had one of these before I started the show. So, 
If you want to check out the full episode, make sure you listen to the podcast, Pod Tiki, The Corpse Reviver, on PodTiki.com or Spotify, iTunes, Apple, uh, 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 Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, like I said before. If you want to follow the podcast, I'm most active on Instagram. That's Pod underscore Tiki. You can follow my personal page at Rum underscore Poet if you're into some of the more spirited side of things, like the uh, less tiki drinks, more um, bourbon and rum and cigars and stuff like that, and, uh, along with all my my personal BS. That I don't care if you see that. I got nothing to hide. All my sordid affairs. So um, make sure you check out uh, Summer Sessions Volume 1 is still on the on the website. That's the EP I put out this last summer. Um, it's still listened to. It's it's called Summer Sessions, but you can actually listen to it any year, any all year round. No one will know. No one's gonna know when you listen to it. It's awesome. So actually, that's a lie because I can go online and see who's listening to it when. But I'm not gonna judge you for listening to summer music in the fall. It's not not a thing. In fact, listen to it all winter long. Uh, what better is escapism than listening to summer music in the winter time? So check that out. Uh, check out our friends over at Surfside Sips. Put in Pod Tiki, all one word, all caps at checkout. You're gonna get 20% off, and they're gonna let you know. Uh, they're gonna let me know that you know, I have people go there. It's gonna let them know. I don't. It's gonna let everybody know a lot of things, but it's gonna let them know that I sent you over there, and they're gonna help the podcast out. So, um, yeah, just rate review. I know everybody is tired of hearing all this rate and review stuff. I get it, but. And these videos are not my bread and butter. This is like a little side thing that I do just to kind of for fun. But if you really want to help the podcast out, please go to where you listen to it, the actual audio podcast, and rate and review. Drop me comments on Instagram or Facebook, Podtiki across the board everywhere. And if you want to help out with uh, a little bit further, then we do have a Patreon. You can go to Podtiki Podcast on Patreon. It's only three bucks a month. Um, and we got we got a couple of uh, insider episodes coming out. We got one up now. We got some new ones coming out. And if I haven't said it here, I said it on the podcast. Uh, any everything I make within this first year, I'm going to put back into the podcast via merch. And I'm going to offer the uh, the the patrons the patrons on Patreon, um, you know, first dibs and maybe some free stuff and uh, some swag and stuff like that. So. Um, it will pay for extra content and some free stuff in the future. So just, uh, yeah, just go ahead and, and, and do that if you want to help the show out. Uh, otherwise, my name is Tony, and this is Pod Tiki, and I'm going to go do some necromancy with this corpse reviver. Hmm. What's that? <clears throat> What's that cat getting into now?